<coughs> okay. They just, they just they don't know no better. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, I, I believe somewhere in Scripture it says something about, about God's people perishing because of the lack of knowledge. Just the fact that they don't know. His people. I seem to struggle day to day. Wait a minute, let me try that. I seem to struggle from day one with the enemy of both God and man. Wait a minute, let me start over. Let me try something else. that there is just as much negative as there is positive. The negative come from them not doing as much as they could do. The positive come from what they have done, with, the, with all the sincerity that they have done it with. The negative for me is just important only because the impact of what, of what you're not doing, we got starving people, we got people that they need to come off of drugs, we got people that are homeless. You are doing something, but as a church whole, you're not making other churches accountable to help the, the, to get in there and fight the good fight. We need people to be able to come out the four walls all the time. Not just during Christmas, Easter, when it's cold. Brothers and sisters are hungry all the time. You know what I'm saying? You wait till it gets cold for them to feed them, they ain't gonna, they ain't, they ain't gonna talk to you. You know what I'm saying? We, I, I'm just saying that there's so much that the church could do. Even the church has only got 20 people for the last 20 years. I don't care how many people you got. We can do a lot more than what we're doing. So that's the negative. The positive is a lot of, a lot of good things are happening. You know, getting the word out, you know, the evangelism, the revivals and stuff like that, the, the events in the park during the summertime, and all that's great. I just believe with all the churches, especially just here in the Northeast, Portland, with all the churches that we do have, we could be doing a lot more. After the wars between my mother and father had subsided, I was still left with a war for my preservation within the space and time that was afforded me by the source. This war was waged to claim the very breath that it had been breathed into my nostrils that I might be sent back to the spirit realm before my purpose on this planet was complete. I recall my mother telling me that one night, while me and my twin brother lay in our room, the struggle for my life had become deathly apparent as I gasped to suck air. No? Okay. I recall my mother telling me that one night, while me and my twin brother lay in our room, the struggle for my life became deathly apparent as I gasped to suck air past my dark blue lips and into my seemingly compromised lungs. Like, like, the, the respect that was there before mm -hmm. was a command of respect. Right, you saw right. Them march, right. You saw them marching. Right. saw them standing up for right. justice, not just for them, but for other kids. Right. You saw the, the right. activism. Right. You saw it. Right. So you had to respect it. Definitely. Do you think that the absence of respect is because of the absence of them seeing you put your word into action? I, I do. I do. Uh, something that you said, it stays in my mind because um, I believe uh, my mom do and my pop do. My, my, my pop Duke always said, yo, David, you're going to need your, you, you're going to need your people. You know, never lose your people. And a family that prays together stays together. You know, if you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. So it goes all about, like the pastor was saying that I was in a church, and I go to church, I go to the masjid because I'm an open person. I try to learn more about God. You know, the submission, the submission of God, to submit to God. Um, but what we, I think what we, what they attend, what we, what we forget, and what, what we forget was once we were young too, you know what I mean? We were shorty too. So when the kids now, they grow up, they're not more, and they're not into like the churches, you know, they pretty much, well, I want to do this, I want to be do that, you know, more of a rebel, you know what I'm saying? It's not more about a, a I don't want to say grab your son and shake him up, you know what I'm saying? But in a sense, you, you have to kind of grab your children and like shake them up because you got to understand something that all this right here that we live in, it's an illusion, you know? And our first thing is, this, this world here is only, uh, this, this, this world here is, is not promised tomorrow. 
So we are trying to, all of us, regardless, you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're Jew, you're Baptist, whatever. We're trying to get to paradise, you know, and I would love for all of us to get to paradise. But mostly our kids. The foundation, man, the foundation is so important right now because the kids right now, after we pass away, brother, they're going to take over. So what we left over, that someone tells me that we didn't really do our job, you know. I don't really like the uh, gasped part. Let's try it this way. I recall my mother telling me that one night, while me and my twin brother lay in our room, the struggle for my life had become deathly apparent while I fought to suck air past my dark blue lips and into my seemingly compromised lungs. I suffered a great deal from asthma which caused me to spend a lot of time in and out of the hospital. Sounds perfect. Should we look at you? Yeah, look it's at fine. me. That way you're absolutely. Yeah, right. We don't want to look you know. directly in the camera. Yeah, exactly. Um, so my first question is, if you tell me a little bit about the lead you knew in his teenage years. Okay. At least my son. And being my son, um, I discovered early on when Lee was probably very young that he had a lot of hyperactivity. It tended to be the, the behaviors that the teachers didn't want to deal with or behaviors, just misbehaving in his classes and things like that. And that carried on all the way through his grade school and to high school. And um, he shared with me some things that let me know how deep his negative behaviors went later on when he became saved. Christian church and became a little bit more open about change right. and transition. I need to stop you right there. I'm so sorry. I forgot to turn off the fan. I'm okay. starting to hear the fan. Okay. okay. There we go. Okay, that makes a great difference. Okay. So, um, going, going, going backwards just for a second, uh, talk to me about that, the, the things that he shared with you as far as he said that he had been um, always having thoughts about doing things that were bad. One, drugs, being involved in drugs, making easy money, uh, drinking, and he was a minor. And um, a lot of lying, a lot of lying to get to have the freedom that he thought he wanted to have. So there were incidences of I went to school today and then find out he didn't go, you know, and um, started having trouble, he was attending Madison High School, started having trouble in high school with uh, attendance, and um, just literally doing things that were just not acceptable or appropriate. And those things carried on uh, to where there would be family arguments, where he'd come home and ask him, you know, about his homework, or, you know, we had some standards in our house about homework and keeping your room clean. And, doing the things that you're supposed to do as a, a young person, and he never wanted to cooperate. There were many days that I could not participate in the activities of my peers, as my lungs would seem to shrink without so much as a warning. It would cause me to thrust my arms into the air and slowly allow my hands to rest upon the top of my head while I tried to calm myself and struggle to take in air. Over time, I grew to fear even the simplest of games like tag or the more complicated ones like basketball and football. It forced me to spend much of my time alone and in thought. Breathe. I would think to myself as I tried hard not to panic. I would watch cars going to and fro while thinking breathe have to breathe. How ironic that now the very breath that the enemy struggled so hard to take from me as a boy is the same breath that I used to explain exactly why he did as a man. I am Crow. <laughs> 